Today marks the 20th anniversary of Resident Evil. Now, Capcom really shone through and presented us with the survival horror genre. Now, some could debate that, you know, there were others before this, and the concept of zombies in video games was also before this, but combining the zombies and survival horror was really something that they cemented and kind of popularized in video games. Not only that, but it kind of uh, expanded the idea of like a Metroid game and made it in a 3D space uh, even before Castlevania came out, uh, Cynthia the Night, and kind of made the whole Metroidvania thing pop out essentially. But more on that as we progress through this Resident Evil respective. Let's get to part one. That is right, because this will be a huge retrospective on nearly all the Resident Evil games, and I'll be talking about why I experienced with all of them. Instead of giving a history through facts and whatnot, I'm going to be going through my personal history with the franchise. So, let's get right into it. Resident Evil debuted on the PS1 on March 30th, 1996 in the US. I didn't play it until way into the series. My first game that I took upon myself to play, I believe was the second one, or it might have even been the third. Now, going back to that, when I actually played Resident Evil 1, it was the director's cut, and it was probably around the line of the PS2 era, so around maybe Code Veronica's when I finally got a copy of it somehow or another. I, I don't quite remember how exactly. Anyway, so it takes place in this mansion. You can play as Jill or Chris, stars members that were basically called in because of some freak accident. Um, the game uses FV cutscenes, and it's very, very cheesy. It's along the lines of like a homage to John Romero and just the classic kind of B-movies, I suppose. But as I said in the intro, it is a Metroidvania at its heart. You, you know, it takes place in this mansion, you're fighting zombies and other killer animals or beasts like dogs and these weird hunter toad-like things. And you're just basically trying to escape alive. You're getting items, you're opening up doors, you're progressing, you got these weapons, it's a survival horror because you know you're trying to limit ammo and you got small bits of health to uh, progress through. And I just, going back to one after the other games, it was a little hard because even as far as archaic games go in terms of like the kin controls, Resident 1 is the pillar of that, but it should still be praised for creating the series and the genre in itself as well. My favorite version of this we'll talk about later, so let's get into the second game. Resident Evil 2 launched on the PS1 on January 21st, 1998, a week before Japan actually, for a fun turn of events. Now, I remember my brother playing this. My brother had a PS1 that I don't know if he bought or he traded with a friend or whatever, but I remember going down to the basement to watch him play some of these games. The other one being uh, Final Fantasy VII. Now, at this point in my life, I was a little too young, I suppose, and a little bit intimidated by this new horrific genre. I mean, I had grown up with the NES and the Super Nintendo when there was like nothing really horrid from any of those games. Everything was bright and colorful. And then this grotesque zombie thing came around and it was just a little too much for me. But I remember finally watching my brother play it and it looked so entrancing to me. And the first time I played it was in high school, years, years later, when my friend got into video games, and she let me a copy of it, and I just remember really, really digging it. Again, it was not my first one. I, I really can't pinpoint my exact first game in the series, but regardless, this game also features two playable characters, but it expands the mansion idea into the whole entirety of Raccoon City, which a lot of it takes place in the, uh, stars the police precinct of Raccoon City and again you try to unlock things you're progressing in the game you're trying to escape and uh, you can play as uh, Leon or Claire Claire's the brother of Chris Leon is a deputy or not a deputy but a rookie in the police force it was a good setting it really expanded the mechanics of what the games really were and there was also two different scenarios there was Leon A Leon B Claire A and Claire B depending on which disc you chose to play through. 
Uh, playing through Claire, it would be A and then Leon B, I believe. And then playing through Leon, it would be Leon A and then Claire B. I think that's how it works. <laughs> kind of confusing, uh, if you ask me. But again, it is probably my favorite classic Resident Evil series. It really just kind of uh, spoke to me. And like I said, it really expanded my idea on what the, the series was capable of. I, I think it really has the best story and the best characters. And just, I, I really... I really dug the environment. Next we have Resident Evil 3 Nemesis debuting on the PS1 on November 10th, 1999. Now I actually think this was my first Resident Evil game and uh, again, not my first as in seeing but my first uh, you know, playing myself to the entirety all the way through. I believe I had first tried it out um, via a rental service and then I think my friend borrowed to me afterwards and then she I had also acquired Resident Evil 2 and also around this time I believe Code Veronica was out as well but I think 3 was my first one anyway so 3 was basically kind of like a rehash of 2 using the same environments um, putting Claire in there and it takes place you know kind of in between the events and Nemesis and the next one Code Veronica were, were basically handled the exact same time two different teams and it was kind of competing they they wanted to have the next number series be veronica but then it got screwed up somehow i i don't remember exactly how it went down anyway my history with it um yeah again it evolved the mechanics it uh had jill in like a skimpy outfit i wouldn't really say that's exactly a plus but i just um it was a good looking PS1 game, it kind of, you know, proved a lot of things, but, you know, playing it for the first time, I didn't really dig into it for it being basically kind of like a rehash of environments with like this pursuing enemy, which the Nemesis is just like the scariest thing I think in the Resident Evil franchise. I mean, of course you had the Lickers that debuted in 2, but Nemesis were just chasing you, and it was just a constant threat, you didn't know what was going to happen. Um, I, I think the mechanics of being able to combine ammo types and then creating these things for your launcher and I like the characters and everything and it really a lot of the things in here I had actually taken for some writing I was doing uh, at in high school at that moment so it is a very key thing to uh, my early accounts of high school life and um, the next one not so much but it also holds a good place in my heart now Resident Evil Code Veronica first debuted on the Dreamcast on February 29th, 2000. It had later launched on the PS2, which is exactly where I had played it, which is around the time when I was actually playing these Resident Evil games. But, you know, it was kind of mind-blowing to me playing Code Veronica because after playing Nemesis, it was like, oh my god, wow, these graphics are like so much more amazing, though it was like dark in a lot of places. And the characters, looking back on it, I had always known at that point that the characters were bad, but maybe not as bad as I do now, which is Claire's involvement with Steve. She went to like this prison island. It was very weird. It was a globe trotting Resident Evil game. You, you had this prison island, then there's like an Antarctic place, and Chris was in there as well, uh, trying to find his sister still. And it was just like this weird experience. But yeah, Steve really sucks, as well as like the bad guy. I don't really want to spoil anything for you, but just there's a lot of just like hokey hokey stuff, even beyond what I had played and known the Resident Evil franchise to be. Um, yeah, going back to it, it doesn't, it feels even clunkier than the PS1 games. I understand what they're trying to do, obviously, to push the limits, but it just, it just doesn't hold a very special place in my heart anymore. But at that time, I think I had just gotten the PS2 around Code Veronica, so I was able to borrow this, I think as well, around the same time as the other Resident Evils. I think I was playing all the Resident Evils going backwards, actually, chronologically on my PS2, because I didn't have a lot to play with. Anyway, Code Veronica, it was, um, I, I don't think it's uh, one of the best in the franchise, really, at all. But let's actually backtrack a little bit, because technically, the successor to Resident Evil 2 was Resident Evil Survivor. It debuted long before Nemesis and Code Veronica, but in the States, it was the fifth game in this series for, you know, us to get, essentially. So let's go with that date, which is August 30th, 2000 for the PS1. I remember seeing this on the shelves and just kind of being like, oh, this looks kind of like VR missions for Resident Evil or for uh, Metal Gear Solid. And I didn't really know what the game was about. I assumed it was just like a 
I don't know, an expansion from the first one, or I don't know what, I don't remember, I don't, I didn't pick up the cover at all and like read it, it just looked, I, I don't know what it was about the game that just didn't make me want to pick it up, but I just assumed it was a expansion to the first game. But this is actually the first Resident Evil game that was not developed by Capcom. It was published by Capcom, developed by Tose, and this is a light gun game. This is a first person shooter, you're going through the environments and you're shooting zombies in that regard. And this is the first time I'm playing this now, and it's it's fine, it's cool, but uh, it just doesn't, again, because I had just played it just for this retrospective, it doesn't really hold a place in my heart, but it is, you know, an interesting concept that Resident Evil would continue to expand upon in the light gun game series of genres or whatever. Let's get into back into the main series now. Speaking of spinouts, the next game in the franchise was Resident Evil Gaiden, released for the Game Boy Color on June 3rd, 2002. Funnily enough, the PAL European regions were the first to get this in 2001. Anyway, this is a game that I really don't have any personal experience with, except for this retrospective playing it, but it takes place on a boat with Leon and Barry returning as protagonists. And it is... It is an RPG kind of. You basically go around, you're doing the exact, you know, the puzzle solving and whatnot, finding parts and progressing through the ship. But when you run into a zombie, you actually go into this turn-based thing where there's a meter going through, as you're seeing right now, and you're trying to hit the zombies within this meter. And even for the Resident Evil franchise, as hard as it is, this is very hard. You are very limited on resources and you can die very, very fast. In terms of how the Game Boy Color games go, it's not a terrible looking game. and It's an interesting um, two characters to be in the series. Uh, returning Barry and Leon together, very, very weird. But um, yeah, that's basically all I have to say on that subject. Resident Evil Remake was released on the GameCube on April 30th, 2002. It's another one of those cases where technically Gaiden came out first, followed by Remake, but in America, Remake actually came out before Gaiden in terms of localization. Anyway, this game, I remember looking so fascinated by it. It looked so gorgeous. The GameCube is kind of looked at and, you know, thinking about the, the game selection that it was kind of like one of those dead consoles where there's not a lot of things on there, but the graphical capabilities of Resident Evil and Resident Evil 4 are just still amazing. They look fantastic. I first played this remake as one of my early articles on Examiner. It was one of my uh, first Blinded series. Blinded, of course, being the retrospective series where I go back, play an old game, and review it anyway. While it still has the tank controls of the original, it is just breathtaking. It still looks gorgeous. The, the version you're seeing now is, of course, the HD remake that came out last year on PS4. And, of course, it makes the game pop even more. But, holy man, is this a fantastic game. Uh, everything, I mean, it wasn't just a, you know, graphical overhaul. They changed a lot of things. They added in these, like, red zombies that you had to pour gasoline onto. And it made the backtracking a little bit more of a hassle than it was in the original, but it just really expanded upon everything that Resident Evil 1 was, and the mechanics that they had uh, basically gotten up to this point and put in this remake. I think it is the best version of Resident Evil you should play, and it might be the best Resident Evil game in the old retrospect. Now, I think 2 still holds plus place in my heart, but Two and Remake are very close to being uh, very, very good Resident Evil games. Of course, since this one is so easy to get a hold of nowadays, of course you can play Resident Evil 2 on PS3 via, you know, virtual download, but I, if I had to recommend any one of them, I think you should start with the beginning with the HD Remake on PS4 if you wanted to get uh, a sense of the old school Metroid kind of feel of the mansion kind of thing but yeah it's just a fantastic game resident evil zero debuted on the gamecube in that same year on november 12th 2002 and it is a hell of a game in that boy as convoluted as the resident evil series go this one really really takes the cake i have first played it because of the hd remake that released this year 
on the PS4, and man, oh man, even though it was a hassle to go through, and I mean a hassle, when you read reviews or heard people talk about backtracking this game in the inventory spaces, you have no idea. There is no inventory space, basically, and you have so much to carry, but you can basically leave it in rooms, but it gets placed randomly in the room. It's just so confusing, it doesn't make sense. Uh, anyway, this takes place, as it suggests, before Resident Evil 1 with Rebecca Chambers, and she's on a train, and then she gets attacked by these zombies because there's a prisoner on board or something, and instead of zombies, which you are fighting zombies, but the main thing is like leeches that are controlling everything, which it is so weird. She says nothing about this in Resident Evil 1, and she should. She acts like nothing ever happened, which in that point in time, of course nothing ever happened because this never came out. Man, do they not explain this in the series. This, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. The leeches, it is just, I don't know if it's, it's not a bad game because I played through the entire thing because I was determined to actually play this thing and know exactly where it turns out. Man, lie, it's a good classic Resident Evil game, one of the very last few that actually came out, but man, it, the story is just, what the hell? I mean, really, what the hell? For the last Resident Evil game I'll be covering on this part one of the retrospective, we have Resident Evil Outbreak, released on the PS2 on March 31st, 2004, and it is coincidentally the last classic type of Resident Evil game, kind of. It is the tank controls, of course, and it's an online game where you can pick a variable suit of uh, characters and you can play online with, I think, up to four players? I can't remember exactly how many people you can play as, but I remember this coming out around the time when online was really getting big on the consoles and they had this weird, crazy adapter on the PS2 and I was like, wow, Resident Evil game, you can play with friends online? That's crazy, but it's not a good game at all. It is just, you're, it takes place in Raccoon City, you know, in, in between two and three, basically, with some random survivors trying to get through. And I understand them trying to do a, you know, spin-off, of course, but it's, I remember my friend getting it, and she was just like, yeah, it's Resident Evil, but because she couldn't really play it online, she just, didn't really like it that much, and I guess if you can't play it online, then I suppose it really does, you know, demeanor it. And because <laughs> those servers are not running now, I was not able to play it online as well. And it is an interesting note that, again, it is the last in the classic Resident Evil franchise, and it's just a sour one at that. But anyway, for part two, I'll be kicking it off with Resident Evil 4, which basically reinvented the franchise as it was. Now, until that time, I bid you adieu. Boom, 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 boom,